Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm very good. How are you doing? Very good, very good. Hope I'm audible. Yes, and hope I'm audible too. Just setting up my. Okay, great. So uh, it's a pleasure to have you today with us, Thank and you so much. Uh, and I would like to introduce our viewers that you know we have uh, Devika Kosla with us, who runs this uh, firm called the Works Interiors in New Delhi, along with uh, Mr. Raj Kosla, and uh, Devika. Uh, and mr raj have been doing bespoke furniture works interior spaces some special designing as well and uh, i understand devik also has done a lot from time to time so so lately we have been uh, into you know doing sessions with a lot of interior designers so as to know how fenestration affects their uh, you know work so uh, welcome once again devika to our today's session and uh, i understand the topic is already known to you which is the influence of doors and windows on the indoor temperature so anything that you would like to say in your introduction as well as um, uh, you know some with the topic of today thank you so much for having me here and uh, i think i'd just like to you know begin with a brief definition of what fenestration is about for those people who have joined us who may not be aware of this architectural jargon so uh, mm -hmm. just to give you an idea in simple terms fenestration is just an opening of a building whether it's a door window or a skylight um can you imagine a building which is just a box and doesn't have any of these openings it would be like living in a dungeon or a cave and um i'm very happy to be here to clear certain doubts that people might have how to uh design their facades regarding the windows and doors um so let's start yeah so okay let's start with the first question of the day of the day so how do you actually look at this subject of fenestration while conceptualizing your designs either it's an architectural scope or it is an interior scope so um you know it completely depends on the project that comes our way uh, many a times we are involved right from inception i'm talking about mm -hmm. let's say stand alone bungalows or farm houses where we are mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know right there at the stage where the architects also start their work uh, it to me i think it's easier to plan it out that way because um, if you have a bigger let's say a one acre area and you're placing your farm house it's so much easier to do the correct orientation you know where the sunlight is going to filter in your east west south all these uh, factors are so important and of course keeping our uh, climate in mind the restrictions mm -hmm. come into play when we are designing an apartment floor mm -hmm. even if mm -hmm. an architect is involved but let's say we are doing a building in gurgaon uh, one floor there the restrictions are everything is uh, the orientation is already set you can't do much about that then how mm -hmm. are we going to look at the project in terms of the exterior glazing the door openings <clears throat> and the fenestration that is provided by the existing uh, structure should we mm -hmm. refurbish that do we need to bring it down is the quality at par so these are the factors that we look at when we uh, uh, you know get into a new project then of course there are mm -hmm. the layout plans and um, then it is uh, then it moves on to what kind of room are we designing what is the purpose of that room so these are the factors that come into play when when a project is uh, is new um so that's how we would address these issues initially towards a project so so very well understood so basically you get more flexibility when it is an architecture plus interior job yes. but yes the flexibility definitely gets limited when you have a given you know palette and you have to only play around within exactly. a limitation exactly and i I'm, i'm sure i can understand that becomes very tough for any architect to probably you know design it in the way they would have had they done the architecture as well exactly exactly there's so many nuances so, yeah, that, that go into uh, designing a space you know it's it's the architectural right. and interiors if they are both done together then i'm sure that mm -hmm. you can you know iron out so many issues in issue itself so i think it is more to do with just like you know a child is given a, a blank uh, i would say uh, paper to draw a sketch as well as color it yeah. but in an interior job probably you know the sketch is already there you just have to color it oh so you have to do it within within the lines kind of True. okay So let's move on to the next question. Uh, I mean, how do you treat uh, in indoor temperatures of a room with the help of fenestration when you 
go about either interiors or for that matter you know architectural projects um there's so many factors that affect that also you know uh, the temperature mm-hmm. of a given space uh, it's not just one first and foremost foremost is the kind of climate that we are in that's that area exactly. right for example mm-hmm. delhi it sees extreme temperatures it sees uh, okay. completely uh, hot weather and that lasts almost 5 to 6 months or maybe more and then extreme winters right. which is a short period so the glazing and mm-hmm. fenestration should take care of both these parts whether it's uh, mm-hmm. you, you know you have to invest in uh, aluminum profiles double glazing you have to take care of the air gaps and this works well for both the uh, winters and summers uh, then mm-hmm. like i said suppose you're designing a space in the hill station then again there are other mm-hmm. factors your furnishings maybe you need a wall to wall carpeting you need uh, other uh, Uh, uh you need cross ventilation is extremely important in delhi and in hill stations who wouldn't want fresh air in the room wherever mm. you are or a good view for that yes. matter so okay. uh window systems i think are really key apart from doing fixed window you should have some openable win- uh, spaces also to let in that fresh air and uh, mm. uh, if you're in a warmer space uh then we in delhi like we have these monsoons where we would like that you know you you want that fresh air Correct. breeze in the evening which is very rare for delhiites correct so, correct that uh, keeping so, all of yeah. that in mind so basically the key takeaway being that okay we need to balance out yeah. the internal temperatures by way of probably internal you know air conditioning or for that matter ventilation for uh i would say uh, venting out stale air yeah. and getting in fresh air so so the basics obviously always you know remain the same true so so how do the how do the the materials that you you know kind of uh, look at in terms of uh, availability of fenestration systems which are your preferred materials and why i mean how do you evaluate various materials that are so available i'll just give that, a little bit that, of a brief here where uh, you know now i i feel we are all really spoiled for choice but mm-hmm. uh, let's say 20 years back we we were dependent right. on wood and uh, yes. the weathering is extreme whether it's delhi bombay i mean across india i'm talking about india right yeah. now and yeah. weathering is so extreme that if you done pu coating also on your wood uh, within mm-hmm. a matter of months that coating would wear off no matter what you do right now okay. we have aluminum profiles we have upvc uh, uh, windows for exterior grade and they come in various colors so earlier mm-hmm. we were restricted with the colors also you could only choose right. from a brown or a white now you have shades of okay. grays you have browns you have <clears throat> pardon uh, different shades of whites also uh, mm-hmm. even in terms of uh, the sleekness and thickness the choices right. are better now earlier we had we were Correct. stuck with a certain thickness we were you know the systems were ugly if i may say so so okay. now uh, uh, one can really design beautiful uh, facades thanks to uh, the kind of products that we have now so whether mm-hmm. you know there are so many factors that one has to look into whether we want mm-hmm. glass for uh, security toughened glass we want to get rid of the grills on the facade we want our, uh, or we are looking at uh, keeping the temperature in the summer mm-hmm. months we want our acs also not to go on an overdrive so how will we take care of all that by installing great systems i uh, i mean that's that's most important factor out here mm-hmm. that we should um, invest in good fenestration systems which will help us to uh, be more energy efficient so so would you like to comment uh, a little bit on let's take an example a single versus double glazing or mm. let's say upvc versus aluminum or a thermal break aluminum versus a non thermal break aluminum because you know all these things affect internal temperature yeah, conditions yeah, yeah. so uh, to my knowledge i think it would totally depend on the kind of structure we have for example if it's a facade a clear facade where i don't have a ledge on top and i don't have a balcony then i would definitely mm-hmm. want a double or a triple glazing depending on mm-hmm. where the sun is falling and for how long it is falling Hello. right and mm-hmm. so, sometimes you have a great balcony it's a boxy balcony so you're uh, you already have a hindrance from the sun and the rain 
so you could go hmm. for uh, a single toughened glass out there keeping your security Correct. and i think security should be utmost in all factors it doesn't matter whether Correct. it's double or single or uh, triple glazing uh when it comes to wood versus aluminum versus upvc i have stopped using wood completely on exterior <clears throat> mm -hmm. because it's such a recurring cost of uh, maintenance <clears throat> sorry my i just did that's that, okay so, yeah yeah so wherever we so it's a recurring cost of maintenance, For maintenance. and so much Correct. recurring between upc upvc and aluminum now it is a, a factor of budgeting so it it depends on what's the area whether it's a full bungalow that you're doing um, and and the budget allows all of that so yeah wood is something that i've completely stopped using and i definitely mm -hmm. uh, would advise double glazing at least that correct Yeah, I'm also with you in that. Uh, you know, obviously, I also advise the the viewers that we normally have three broadly three categories of glasses. One is toughened, the other is obviously insulated glass, which can be double or triple, and right. the third is security. And the double and the triple can also be with a combination of a security glass in terms that the customer really needs security plus double glass. Exactly. So the double glass is also you uh, you know is within uh, is in between in price. as against the tifon and a security glass but three four advantages that uh, a double glass gives versus the other options is that number one obviously it gives you heat insulation right because the two glasses if they are hermetically sealed it will have argon gas or dehydrated yes, air yes and it keep air with molecules water molecules that conduct heat so normally the process of doubling the glass involves hermetical hermetic sealing mm. with argon gas where the internal water molecules have been dried up right second is it also gives noise insulation because it's basically two panes and mm. uh, of glass and uh, the noise uh, noise or let's say sound waves tend to attenuate when they are crossing two True. layers third is also which many people don't address is that let's say when we have had winters now and we have our heaters running inside the house condensation takes place True. now True. this is a phenomenon people are aware of when they use cars right. i mean you know in a car front windshield would obviously need uh, ac to be on so as to a little bit of you know front windscreen ac to be on so as to match the outside with the inside temperature yeah. so that that condensation can go now this is one advantage with neither a security glass or a single toughened will exactly, give you exactly. which take care of the condensation fourth being that you know the glass has a property and not a defect that it can break by itself exactly. it's called glass style and you know in the in the glass safety manual also it mentions as glass suicide that glass right. just can break by itself right we will not get into the technicality of it which involves nickel sulfide getting hmm. restricted in a very limited space when the glass is toughened but yes if a glass breaks by itself the probability of both breaking is by far lesser than one glass breaking That's so true. this also gives you <clears throat> additional i would say you know a means of security when one glass breaks and you get panicky that what thunder and i have to go out of town and i want to close this particular you know exactly. uh, room or it so i would say that yes being a you know a window maker a uh, double glass is more value for money absolutely i i only prescribe that i have used that personally in my space and uh, mm -hmm. for me the most important part is also noise reduction you know past two years we've all been doing our zoom calls and stuff like this at home and yeah. there is uh, it really helps with the sound from the uh, from the streets uh, it can mm -hmm. give you a complete uh, soundproof room if you if you plan it out well mm -hmm. so correct th that that's so so let's move on to the next question now this sure. is about you know the room indoor temperature and also the air quality so we've talked about noise mm -hmm. we've talked about you know other things as well but i think uh, specifically you guys being in delhi where you know the air is always uh, i know not to good not to you know accepted in the general social uh, scenario where in people also tell me windows ki zarurat hi nahi hai all fixed windows are good why because we never go out there is so much of pollution so how do you take care of that particular aspect specifically when we talk about new delhi specifically which is really bad about new delhi uh, so yeah. just a just a thing what i do i really believe in cross ventilation um okay. have a lot of plants around you go biophilic in your designs that's very important mm -hmm. these days 
yes good fenestration mm. is important there are certain times mm. in the day when the air pollution rises and also you have to follow that graph allow yourself right. some cross ventilation and fresh air to come in which mm. is i think most mm. important you cannot live in a sealed uh, space you know those uh, those even your acs they need to breathe and you cannot have that uh, you cannot be breathing in that stale air all the time uh, mm. invest mm. in good air purifiers but uh, do a complete i think it's very important to do an in depth market research understand mm. what are the uh, products that are available and use them to your advantage don't follow a fad mm. do uh, yes. do something that will suit your family and your needs just because somebody mm. has installed all glass facade doesn't mean it will work for you you have to understand mm. the orientation of your building you have to understand how, what is your balcony space You have to understand, mm. uh, you know, your personal preferences also. So, mm. uh, you know, one thing will not fit everybody. You correct, and that's the best part. I mean, uh, yes. for example, that's where creativity gets right. That's the best part yeah. because I can come to you and uh, come to you with any problem, and you can help me choose. This is the kind of window I should go for. This is the kind of double glazing I can do. I can reduce the width, mm. height, size. uh that's the mm. best part you know and and uh, the client the end user mm. has to trust the designer and has to trust the manufacturer to give them the best solution mm -hmm. so i feel mm. that uh, for each project or for each person do your research note down what are the mm. things that you're looking for jot down yeah. your personal preferences and then uh, mm. discuss this with your uh, designer or architect so so basically what uh probably your the key takeaway or let's say your submission is that what any individual when he is going out to get an interior space done or for that matter an architectural space done they should actually uh be first informed of their needs absolutely and that is where basically that becomes a more articulated brief for the person you you are hiring for designing yeah. your project yeah because normally in projects it's more i mean you know i've often come across architects and i keep on talking to them very frequently wherein uh, the biggest problem that everyone has in their mind is that you know because the customer is normally not functionally aware or technically aware yes. it's the aesthetics that you know which do the rounds most of the times in the discussion right. okay, okay this is matlab this is, i know this is technically good but it acha nahi lag raha hai so you know it's, it's a very tough very important balance. you know i would i i take my clients to my vendors and manufacturers and make them understand the process mm -hmm. because for also the price points suddenly they'll be like oh it's way beyond our budget there's the reason why it's mm -hmm. beyond the budget mm -hmm. and that's another mm -hmm. thing that i uh, stress upon that it's important to pay for these mm -hmm. things now and curtail mm -hmm. on certain things which can be done later these are fixed things which need to be addressed yes. at the beginning of your project so it's better to take away some other budgets and put it into these things so that so basically know, the balancing work absolutely either it's technical functional architectural yes. or commercial so basically the architect has to be involved in more of balancing of course i mean uh, the vendors can help in mm -hmm. but yes the cus the end customer probably would definitely need some advice yeah. in terms of all the aspects and well balanced to meet his needs absolutely right so very well said let's move on to our next you know question wherein sure. uh, i have something wherein how can designers create doors and windows which can incorporate artisanal you know craftsmanship that's a lovely question uh, so off plate for the interior doors i'll tell you what we've been doing we've been sandwiching uh, fabric in glass mm -hmm. in wooden frames or aluminium okay. frames and uh, right. so this fabric just needn't be the run of the mill fabric that's available you could have a vintage piece uh, you mm -hmm. could even create a pattern using uh, using the artisans uh, and create an embroidered pattern or anything of that sort so we have to marry uh, what is available in the you know in terms of uh, the contemporary and Correct. get our artisans also to uh, come into the design field we're losing uh, we're sort of losing that you know we're not giving them that uh, uh, for example i have some brilliant artisans who work for us and they're not teaching mm. their skills to their children because Correct. they don't have that kind of platform they've done that they don't see uh, the future of their children in this field so more of Correct. us have to come into the field and allow 
uh, I mean, your aluminium and everything is extremely modern and contemporary. Can we mm -hmm. blend it using some of our artisans and their uh, uh, beautiful work? So this is Definitely. where the creativity will come into play. Yeah, so so when we talk about artisanal work, obviously we are talking of more you know classical, traditional creativity, bringing it forward, bringing it. You yeah, know, you know you can even have a fun element to it. It needn't be very traditional, yeah. but you can use their skill yeah. sets and create something modern. Correct. Right. So so here uh, I have uh, something in my mind wherein normally what we are doing is basically mm -hmm. the joinery work, which is the framing right. work. Right. 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 So, so the glass, the infill is something wherein mm -hmm. anyone and everyone can play with. Right. The idea of doing the joinery or the framework is that we don't want the doors to sag. Absolutely. We want the doors to slide properly. But you see the, the picture mm. uh, is through the glass. Yes. So the, the glass is the element which can be played upon. Absolutely. We have, we have sandwich glasses. Mm -hmm. We can do any kind of infill. So uh, the creativity has to come in in terms of the wider space that you get in the space where you install the glass as against what we do. We only do the, the four inches borders on the right, sides and right. we're taking the entire engineering in that in those borders. Which the rest, is, everything uh, is very, very important, yeah. of course. Yeah. So so we are basically engineers taking care of functionality. Yeah. So so the aesthetics is always open. I mean if an architect tells me I would never, you know, uh, advise him against or her against using any glass that they want. They want because you know that is something which probably is a is an infill. Exactly. It is not something that we make. Right. So that is where, yes, definitely some creativity can be introduced. And uh, maybe if something comes from your side to work upon, we we'll, I'll, I'll be happy to work with my I design team. I would love that. I would love that. To come up with a solution to incorporate what you have in your mind. Great. Okay. So let's move on to our next question. What is the advice that you would like to give to our audience in terms of, you know, selecting the doors and windows in mm -hmm. for Thermal comfort, optimal. Okay, I mean, you know what, frankly speaking, most of the times when we are talking to any architect and interior designer, we actually know what's the problem. Mm. As in, you know, we need more ventilation, we need more air circulation, we need thermal comfort, we need noise comfort, uh, we don't need condensation. Mm. So when we speak to architects, all we are trying to know is how you guys who are creatively so different in their approach towards the same subject are able to tell our viewers the same answers in a different language because <laughs> yeah and why because you know it, it's like a classroom wherein more i feel that when you are teaching children it's more important for the teacher to be such with the children so that they love her more than the subject the subject automatically becomes loved why because they love the teacher so that is what we're trying to do our curriculum is the same right our field is very wide all we are trying to find a teacher most of the time is who are who is able to address all the but same questions. Let me tell in a you one thing. Way. We are also yeah. constantly learning. And it's not okay. just learning from y'all. It's also learning from our clients. Sometimes they come Correct. with such in-depth research that it just blows my mind. Right. I mean, I, I get so surprised with the kind of research they come and I'm like, oh my God, that product is available now. And okay. uh, so, yeah, I think it's a matter of learning constantly because... Mm. Uh, every now and then there is something new in the market. I'm sure even uh, with windows and doors that y'all are doing, probably I'm not fully aware of uh, everything that y'all have to offer, right? So mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to selection or when it comes to that bit where the windows and doors are being discussed with uh, between architects and their clients, I think they should be aware of making uh, correct choices. There's too much out there, mm. right? Sometimes their research is so in depth that they get lost. So uh, it has That's to be like even over research at times. Over research. I mean, it's, it's, like, yeah, over yeah. research at times. Uh, it's like you know today. Sorry, but no, no, no. yeah, very important. Where you know what happens is that these days someone gets sick, so we know that in all our houses there are people who are Google doctors. Oh God! And the tell me about it. Like <laughs> yes. And the doctors don't like them. So why? Because it's always uh, knowledge. I mean, they don't understand that every subject or every human is, you know, different in their build. So, so I am sure it's the same with architect as means. well. Because, yeah. Yeah. And I think so when it, I say informed choices, I also mean it's so important to know when to stop and when to trust. Correct. Right. Correct. And uh, keep your environment in mind. 
so Correct. if you are going to pay a heavy amount for a fenestration then think long term you are cutting down Correct. on your electricity bills so mm. in in the in the long term of 5 years let's say isn't that going mm. to be more helpful than having a wooden frame single glass where you keep pumping in money polishing it every year Correct. or every 6 months mm. rather than having a material which looks good which is sleek which is giving you everything so uh, yeah. you know you have to make you have to balance this out like we discussed earlier yeah. so so yes. so take away certain budgets from somewhere and pump it in this mm-hmm. and maybe 6 months down the line you can invest in something that you really coveted so uh, it is no point paying money for continuous repairs there's no point being yeah. insensitive to uh, the environment i mean all of us have to consciously uh, help each other yeah and and i i think it's our duty why because obviously in india when people come to do their apartments or their houses they are you know uh, unfortunately more towards you know proving that okay yes. i'm going to be this and i want to be different from the other but yeah i mean considering all that it's our duty to not be judgmental and yeah. you know to make them take the right decision absolutely so, and so there's so much available even. look at the lovely sliding fittings that are available now for exteriors Correct. and uh, suppose Correct. you're doing a corner window where you want all glazed uh, the corners are the... beautiful and they can be opened of course now again you may love that but it might not look good or might not fit in your structure so that's Correct. where Correct. one has to understand can i do this if i do this what are my pros and cons and uh, even the architect and designer shouldn't make it so uh, you know like as though it's it's a it's so easily available but when you come to doing it it just falls flat on your you know you just fall flat on your face so you also have to do an in depth research and i think that's Definitely. where uh, it's important for designers and architects to constantly keep up with their surveys and their research correct so i'm with you on that it, i'm with you on that so it was i mean unfortunately we've come to the end of the session although i would have loved to talk to you for <laughs> few more minutes but uh, it was a pleasure to have you with us today thank you uh, any so last much. words on you know designing fenestration system based on context for our viewers based on context that's i think that was the whole uh, today's uh, talk was actually about yeah. that if you're in Correct. delhi there's a different way to do things if you're in mumbai mm-hmm. there's a different way to do things you have to take care of moisture in the rain if you're sitting in kasoli then there's a different way to do things so uh, try and understand where you're building try and use local materials try and use uh, local artisans yeah. uh, of course uh, we need fenestration it's you have to go to a manufacturer or vendor but uh, within yeah. that structure how well can you utilize all these elements and understand every uh, all the factors that will influence your design and your space so, very well said i would like to add on to it that uh, from a company which is you know we are very very uh, i would say pro sustainability so, so i will pick up from there the context definitely means the environment around you or the kind of environment you would love to have around you backed by sustainable products and sustainable designs absolutely thank you very much thank, thank you, you so much, much for having me thank you bye bye see you